Hello, and welcome back to our video series on pharmacology. In this video, we will discuss chapter number 16, Psychiatric Drugs. Learning objectives for this chapter. Name and describe the therapeutic effects of categories of drugs that are used to treat various types of mental illness, including neurosis and anxiety, psychosis and schizophrenia, depression, bipolar disorder, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, and withdrawal from addiction. Give alternative names for the anti-anxiety and antipsychotic categories of drugs. Describe the cause, symptoms, and treatments for tardive dyskinesia. Describe dietary restrictions for patients taking MAO inhibitor drugs. When given the name of a well-known psychiatric generic drug, identify the trade name. When given the generic and trade names of a psychiatric drug, identify what drug category it belongs to and what disorder is used to treat. When given a psychiatric drug category, Identify several generic and trade names in that category. And lastly, when given an ending common to several generic drugs, identify the related drug category. I will right, start with a, a brief introduction. A psychiatric drugs treat diseases of the mind, otherwise known as mental illness. Now, these include a variety of emotional disorders that involve abnormalities of personality, uh, mood, and behavior. Now we'll talk about psychiatric drugs a little more detail. It's estimated that 50% Half of all hospital admissions are in some way related to a mental health problem. This could include anxiety, depression, suicide, uh, postpartum depression, uh, psychosis, eating disorders, panic attacks, social phobias, obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, psychosomatic illness, ADHD, attention deficit and hyperactivity disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, drug addiction, and alcoholism. All right, the first conditions we'll talk about. Our drugs are used to treat neurosis and anxiety. The common symptoms of neurosis would include anxiety, anxiousness, uh, tension, or it could be all of those, but at a more intense level than normal. And the person may also, may also have a feeling of apprehension and a feeling of vague, unsubstantiated fears. Now, patients with anxiety or neurosis never experience any loss of touch with reality, and that's not always the case for a mental illness. Uh, treatments for neurosis and anxiety would include the use of anti-anxiety drugs. Another term for anti-anxiety drugs is anxiolytic drugs. Another way to treat these conditions would be by using a minor tranquilizer drug. Now the phrase minor tranquilizer drug is somewhat of a misnomer because it implies that this class of drugs is for some reason less effective than a major tranquilizer drug or that minor tranquilizer drugs are just major tranquilizers at a lower dose and neither of those is true. In fact, minor tranquilizer drugs are chemically unrelated to, to major tranquilizer drugs. And minor tranquilizers are extremely effective drugs with a specific therapeutic effect for treating neurosis. The first category of drugs that we'll talk about that are used to treat neurosis and anxiety are the benzodiazepine anti-anxiety drugs. And this is the most commonly prescribed uh, type of drug for the treatment of anxiety and neurosis. And these work because they bind to several specific types of receptor sites in the brain to, prov to provide sedation. Now, this category of drugs will uh, affect a person's thought processes and their emotional behavior. And it can also uh, decrease muscle tension that comes with anxiety. And all benzodiazepine drugs are Schedule IV drugs. Some examples of this category of drugs. Alprazolam, also known as Xanax. Chlordiazepoxide, also known by its trade name Librium. Chlorazepate, also known by uh, the trade name uh, Transine. Diazepam also known by the term uh, Valium. Lorazepam, also known by the trade name Ativan. Another category of drugs that's used to treat uh, neurosis and anxiety are antidepressants. And there are different categories of antidepressants that are effective in treating anxiety. And they include uh, tricyclic antidepressants, uh, SSRIs, and that stands for Selective Serotonin Reuptake Inhibitors, or SNRIs, Serotonin and Norepinephrine Reuptake Inhibitors. These other drugs are used to treat uh, neurosis and anxiety, buspirone, also known by the trade name uh, buspar, and this acts by stimulating uh, serotonin receptors within the brain. Another drug here would be hydroxazine, also known by its trade name uh, Vistero. This is an antihistamine drug that has a side effect of sedation to help uh, decrease anxiety. Another drug that's used to treat neurosis and anxiety is mapropamate, also known by the trade name Miltown. Now this acts on the thalamus and the limbic system on the brain to decrease anxiety. And this is also a Schedule IV drug. Another type of drug category is used to treat 
neurosis and anxiety are barbiturate sedative and hypnotic drugs. And these are Schedule 3 and Schedule 4 drugs. Some examples of this category would include butabarbital, known by the trade name butazol, mephobarbital, known by the trade name meberol, and phenobarbital, known by the trade name luminol. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat social anxiety disorder. Now, this condition is characterized by having a fear of any number of situations, including generic social situations like crowds or a store or meetings or parties. It could include uh, personal encounters, talking to people on the phone or meeting and greeting uh, new people. It also covers a fear of speaking, especially to strangers or authority figures, or speaking in front of a group. There are uh, multiple physical symptoms that come with this disorder. Extreme nervousness, sweating, blushing, tremors, nausea, stammering, an inability to think clearly, and a fear that everyone is looking at you. This condition is best treated with SSRIs and SNRIs, antidepressant drugs. Uh, professional actors and musicians, uh, singers, and others who are in the public eye take propanolol, also known by the trade name Enderol, to block the physical effects of uh, excess epinephrine uh, in response to performance anxiety. So these uh, people would not take a daily SSRI or SNRI. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat panic disorder. Now, panic disorder is also known as panic attacks. This is characterized by having a sudden and overwhelming sense of great fear in the absence of any situation or reason that would create anxiety or fear. Now, the physical symptoms of, a, of this condition are very intense and can even mimic having a heart attack. And the disorder is treated with various types of anti-anxiety and antidepressant drugs. Some examples of drugs that could be used to treat panic disorder are Schedule IV drugs, including alprazolam, which is Xanax, and clonazepam, which is uh, clonopin. A certain antidepressants could also be used, such as uh, tricyclic antidepressants and SSRIs and SNRIs. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder. Now, this condition is characterized by thoughts that cause anxiety, and the repetitive actions are to relieve or escape the anxiety of a perceived threatening situation. And although the person knows that the behavior is excessive and unreasonable, they are unable to stop doing them. So OCD would be treated with either antidepressants or could be treated with antipsychotic drugs. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat psychosis and schizophrenia. First, we'll start with uh, psychosis. This is having a loss of touch with reality, which results in having delusions, hallucinations, inappropriate moods, and general uh, bizarre behavior. Now, the symptoms of psychosis are based on an overactivity of the neurotransmitter dopamine, either because dopamine is overproduced or there is a hypersensitivity of dopamine receptors. Now, what's thought to play a role in psychosis are imbalances in neurotransmitters and also histamine, neurotransmitters such as serotonin, acetylcholine, and norepinephrine. And the most common type of psychosis is schizophrenia. Now, treatment involves the use of antipsychotic drugs. These are also known as neuroleptic or major tranquilizer drugs. And these act because they block dopamine receptors in many areas of the brain, including the limbic system, which is what will control emotion. All right, when it comes to antipsychotic drugs, now these will decrease psychotic symptoms of hostility and agitation and paranoia, but without causing confusion or sedation. And these drugs are not scheduled drugs, and they are not addictive. Prior to the introduction of modern antipsychotic drugs, barbiturate drugs were used to sedate agitated and psychotic patients. Now, barbiturates have been replaced by the phenothiazine group of antipsychotic drugs. And phenothiazine was the original parent drug for this group. It was first manufactured in 1883 as a wormer for livestock. Some minor changes in its chemical structure resulted in the creation of two large but very different categories of phenothiazine drugs. One category is composed of phenothiazine drugs that act as an antihistamine drug and are used to treat allergies, itching, nausea, and vomiting. The second category is composed of phenothiazines that are used to treat psychosis and schizophrenia. Chlorpromazine, also known by the trade name Thorazine, which is the first of the modern antipsychotic drugs developed from the original parent molecule, is still one of the most widely used antipsychotics. And I'll talk a little bit more about uh, phenothiazine drugs for psychosis and schizophrenia. These are the largest chemically related class of drugs that are used to treat psychosis and schizophrenia. And they act because they block receptors in the brain that would include uh, dopamine, histamine, alpha, and serotonin. Some examples of phenothiazine drugs would include chlorpromazine, flufenazine, perfenazine, chlorperazine, thioridazine, 
and trifluoperazine. Another category of drugs that are used to treat psychosis and schizophrenia are dibenzapine drugs. And these act because they block uh, dopamine and serotonin receptors in the brain. Some examples of this category of drugs would be acenapine, also known by the trade name uh, Safras, clozapine, known by the trade names uh, Clozaril and Fazaclo, loxapine, known by the name Loxetane, olanzapine, known by the trade name uh, Zyprexa, and quetiapine, also known by its brand name uh, Seroquel. Now we'll mention a quick uh, drug alert about one of these drugs we just mentioned. Zyprexa Zytus is a trade name of a very special tablet form of Zyprexa that dissolves in the mouth within 5 to 15 seconds. Now because of their mental illness, many psychotic patients are not compliant when taking their drugs because they don't understand the importance of the drugs or they feel that someone's trying to poison them. And one study has found that up to 75% of schizophrenic patients don't take their drugs regularly or at all. Now psychotic patients commonly refuse drugs or high tablets in their mouth and will later dis discard them. So having a drug in this form, one that would dissolve quickly, assures that the patient will comply with their drugs as the entire dose will dissolve quickly in the mouth. Now there are other antipsychotic drugs that are available as an orally disintegrated tablet also. Or those include aripiprazole, clozapine, olanzapine, risperidone. Another category of drugs that's used to treat psychosis and schizophrenia are the benzesaxazole, and these work by blocking the dopamine and serotonin receptors in the brain. And some examples of this category of drugs would include iloperidone, also known by the trade name Phenapt, paliperidone, also known by the trade name Enviga, risperidone, known by the trade name Risperdal, Ciprazidone, also known by its trade name Geodon. There's some other drugs that are used to treat psychosis and schizophrenia, and these will be chemically unrelated drugs. And these drugs will act by blocking dopamine and serotonin receptors also. And they're grouped together because each drug category only includes one or two drugs. Some examples here, aripoprazole, also known by the name Abilify, haloperidol, known by its trade name Haldol, lorazidone, known by the trade name Latuda, Rizerpine, and last one, thiofixine, also known by the trade name Nevane. And the antipsychotic drugs, in particular the phenothiazines, cause a group of adverse effects known collectively as extrapyramidal side effects. Symptoms of tardive dyskinesia include involuntary and repetitive movements of the face, such as grimacing, uh, smacking the lips, chewing, blinking, uh, sticking out the tongue, rocking back and forth, marching in place, humming or grunting. We can also include athetoid movements of the arms, which is writhing of the arms, and also of the legs and fingers. Now, the physician may recommend that the patient take a drug holiday from their antipsychotic drugs to lessen the symptoms of the extrapyramidal side effects. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat depression. Uh, depression is a mood disorder that's characterized by insomnia, crying, a lack of pleasure in any form of activity, an increase or a decrease in appetite, the lack of ability to act or concentrate. Some other symptoms would be guilt, uh, helplessness, hopelessness, worthlessness, and uh, thoughts of suicide and death. Now, depression is caused by a decreased level of certain neurotransmitters within the brain. Those include serotonin and norepinephrine. Now, treatment involves the use of antidepressant drugs known as mood-elevating drugs. The so treatment not only alleviates the symptoms of depression, but will also increase mental alertness, will help to normalize sleep patterns, help to normalize uh, the person's appetite, and it will decrease uh, suicidal uh, ideation. And there are several categories of antidepressant drugs. They can include uh, tricyclic antidepressants, tetracyclic antidepressants, and the SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Other examples of categories here, SNRIs, serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors, and MAOs, monoamine oxidase inhibitor drugs. A quick historical note, originally, uh, amphetamine drugs were used to treat depression. They acted to stimulate the central nervous system to mask the patient's depressive symptoms. However, amphetamines have a high potential for abuse and do not correct the underlying chemical imbalance that is causing that person's depression. So therefore, they are no longer used to treat depression. In 1951, while evaluating a drug for uh, its effectiveness in treating uh, TB, researchers noted that even seriously ill and dying patients developed a happy, optimistic attitude despite the lack of clinical improvement in their TB. And this drug was identified as a MAO, monoamine oxidase inhibitor, and it formed the basis of the first category of drugs that was used to treat depression, MAO inhibitors. In 1958, a drug being tested as an antipsychotic drug, 
showed significant antidepressant effects. That drug was imipramine, also known by the trade name Tofrenol, and it was the first of the tricyclic antidepressant category drugs. And regarding tricyclic antidepressant drugs, these inhibit the reuptake or prolong the action of norepinephrine and serotonin. This will help to correct the lower levels of these neurotransmitters. They also act by increasing the sensitivity of receptors on neurons to the available norepinephrine and serotonin. And this can also affect the levels of a person's acetylcholine and histamine. And there are some common side effects for the tricyclic antidepressants, including dry mouth, dry eyes, blurry vision, constipation, and urinary retention. And this category of drugs gets their name because of the triple ring configuration of their chemical structure. That's why it's tricyclic. And some examples of drugs that fall in this category, amitriptyline, amoxapine, disipramine, also known by the trade name norpramine, doxapine, also known by its trade name uh, sinequan, imipramine, known by the name trofanil, nortriptyline, known by its trade names aventil and pamelor, protriptyline, known by its trade name vivactyl, trimipramine, also known by its trade name uh, sermontyl. In this image, we have the chemical structures of two uh, tricyclic antidepressant drugs, imipramine here on the left and amitriptyline on the right. And each one, you can clearly see the three ring structures here. That's why these are tricyclic antidepressants. The other category of drugs used to treat depression are the tetracyclic antidepressants. It's although slightly different in chemical structure, tetracyclic antidepressants have essentially the same therapeutic effect as tricyclic antidepressants. And some examples of this category of drugs would include meprotiline and also mirtazapine, also known by its trade name, Remeron. Another category of drugs that are used to treat depression are 5-HT receptor agonist drugs. Now the 5-HT uh, references serotonin receptors, and the formal name here is 5-hydroxytryptamine. And these agonist drugs will bind to and stimulate the same receptors that natural serotonin would if they were present in normal amounts. An example of this kind of drug would be velazidone, also known by its trade name Vibrid. The other category of drugs are the SSRIs, selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. And these work because they block the normal reuptake of free serotonin by nerve cells. So when serotonin levels are low in patients with depression, these drugs allow the available serotonin to bind with more receptors for a longer period of time before they get broken down and eventually recycled. Now, SSRIs do not affect histamine or acetylcholine levels, and these do not cause the side effects that are seen in the tricyclic antidepressant drugs. Some examples of SSRIs, citalopram, also known as uh, Celexa, escitalopram, also known as Lexapro, fluoxetine, also known by the name Prozac, fluvoxamine, also known as uh, Luxor, uh, paroxetine, known by the trade name uh, Paxil, and sertraline, also known by the trade name Zoloft. See another category of drugs that are used to treat depression, are the SNRIs, serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. And these will block the normal reuptake of serotonin and norepinephrine. So when levels are low in patients with depression, these drugs will allow the available serotonin and norepinephrine to activate more receptors and for a longer period of time before they are eventually broken down. Some examples of an SNRI would include desphenlafaxine, also known by the trade name uh, Pristique, duloxetine, also known by the trade name Cymbalta, Levomilnasopran, also known by the trade name Fetsima. Venlafaxine, also known by the trade name Effexor. Another category of drugs used to treat depression are the MAOs, monoamine oxidase inhibitors. Because of their chemical structure, some neurotransmitters are co collectively known as monoamines, and those include epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin. So the enzyme monoamine oxidase breaks down those particular types of neurotransmitters. So monoamine oxidase inhibitors will prevent that enzyme from breaking down norepinephrine and serotonin within the brain. Now this is an older group of antidepressant drugs and is, is prescribed less frequently than others because there's a possibility of uh, severe side effects from uh, drug-food interactions. So this is not the drug of choice for initiating uh, a treatment for depression. And these are only used for depression that has not responded well to other drugs. Some examples of an MAO would be isocarboxazid, also known by the trade name Marplan, phenylzine, also known by the trade name Nardil, and trandocypramine, also known by the trade name uh, Parnate. Right, the enzyme monoamine oxidase will break down norepinephrine and serotonin in the brain 
but in the intestines, it normally breaks down tyramine, as found in the foods we eat. Now, when a patient takes an MAO inhibitor, the MAO enzyme is blocked, and tyramine is not broken down in the intestines, but instead, it gets absorbed into the blood. So, once in the blood, large amounts of tyramine stimulate the release of norepinephrine. And this will cause violent headaches, severe hypertension, it can even cause a stroke. Now, this reaction occurs uh, even more quickly if a patient who is taking MAO inhibitors eats food that are already high in tyramine, including aged cheese, red wine, beer, chicken liver, bananas, bologna, salami, sausage, avocados, sauerkraut, raspberries, dried fruits, anchovies, caviar, meat tenderizer, soy sauce, ginseng, coffee, tea, colas, and chocolate. So all those foods and drinks listed here are already high in tyramine. So eating or drinking those, and then on top of that, taking the MAO inhibitor will cause a very severe spike in hypertension. See, some other drugs that are used for depression? Now these antidepressant drugs are chemically unrelated to other antidepressant drugs, and their mechanism of action is not clearly understood. And some examples of this type of drug would be bupropion, also known by the name Welbutrin aplensin, nefazidone, also known by the trade name Oleptro, trazodone, also known by the trade name Brintelex. Now also available to treat depression are combination drugs. And these will contain a, an antidepressant, a benzodiazepine, anti-anxiety drug, or an antipsychotic drug. Some examples of these, the drug Limitrol, which is a combination of amitriptyline chlordiazepoxide, Etrophon, which is a combination of amitriptyline and perfenazine. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat bipolar disorder. Now, bipolar disorder is also known as manic depressive disorder. It's characterized by two very opposite emotions, depression and mania. And in the manic stage of the disorder, this is associated with increased levels of norepinephrine in the brain and also hyperactivity. Also very common in the, the manic stage, agitation, euphoria, rapid talking and thinking, devising very grandiose plans, and also showing very poor judgment. So a patient who has bipolar disorder, their mood will go from both extremes, from the uh, very manic, very high end of the spectrum, to a very low, very depressed stage. Now a more common but less well-known type of bipolar disorder is characterized by mood swings between depression and anger and, and impulsiveness. Drugs that are used to treat manic depressive disorder lessen the severity and frequency of these mood swings. So these are called mood stabilizing drugs. And these drugs can come in uh, different categories, such as antipsychotics, anticonvulsants, antidepressants, and plus other drugs that effectively treat the mania phase of the manic depressive disorder. Right, some examples of the antipsychotics, they're used to treat uh, both phases. Aripiprazole, also known by the name Abilify. Acenapine, also known by the trade name Safras. Olanzapine, also known by the name uh, Zyprexa. Quetiapine, also known by its trade name uh, Seroquel. Risperidone, also known by its trade name Risperdol, and Ziprazidone, known by its trade name Geodon. Uh, some examples of a benzodiazepine anti-anxiety drug that treats both phases, Clonazepam, also known by its trade name Clonopin, and this is a Schedule IV drug. Some examples of anticonvulsants that are used to treat both phases, Carbamazepine, also known by the trade name Equetro, Lamotrigine, also known by the trade name Lamictal, Topiramate, known by its trade name Topamax, and Valproic Acid, known by the trade names Depakote and Depakine. Another drug that's used to treat bipolar disorder is lithium. This is an antipsychotic that's found effective in treating only the manic phase of the condition. See so other kinds of drugs you'll see to treat uh, manic depressive disorder are combination drugs. Some examples of this would be Symbiax, which is a combination of olanzapine and fluoxetine. And olanzapine is a dibenzapine antipsychotic, and fluoxetine is an SSRI. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat eating disorders. And the first disorder we'll talk about is anorexia nervosa. And this is an extreme chronic fear of being fat. The patient will weigh much less than expected for their age and for their height. And they will continue to diet. And they will decrease their food intake to the point of uh, starvation. And even though the patient will be extremely thin, they actually feel fat. So another eating disorder is bulimia nervosa. Now the patient is of normal weight, but wishes to be thinner. So in order to lose weight, the patient will diet, will make themselves vomit, will use laxatives, and will alternatively binge or eat large amounts of food and then purge. So they may, may be eating a lot of food all at once, but as soon as they're done eating, they'll make themselves vomit it all back up. So the body cannot absorb or get any real use of the food that they just ate. Now bulimia nervosa is, can be treated with a number of different categories of drugs. 
They can be treated with uh, tricyclic antidepressants, such as disipramine, also known by its trade name norpramine. It can be treated with SSRIs, like Prozac or Lovox. It can be treated with MAO inhibitors, such as isocarboxazid, known by its trade name Marplan. It can be treated with an anticonvulsant uh, topiramate, also known by the trade name Topamax. It can also be treated with lithium. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat premenstrual dysphoric disorder, or PMDD. This is a mood disorder that includes uh, physical and emotional symptoms of premenstrual syndrome. So this can include uh, depression, anxiety, and sleep disturbances that will significantly interfere with the woman's life. So this is a severe and debilitating extension of PMS. All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat ADHD, attention deficit, and hyperactivity disorder. Now, hyperactive children exhibit symptoms of restlessness, uh, short attention span, distractibility, uh, impulsiveness, uh, disruptive behavior, and emotional lability. Now, this is a really a complex of symptoms previously known as uh, minimal brain dysfunction and sometimes just ADD, attention deficit disorder. But this condition is now known as ADHD. Now, the cause of ADHD uh, could be brain damage uh, caused at birth, it could be uh, genetic factors, or it could be other abnormalities. In 2007, a study of progressive MRI scans of ADHD children indicated that it was not a disease, but a delay in brain development. And this condition is going to be five times more common in boys than it is in girls. And most children outgrow the symptoms of ADHD by late childhood. See, any drug therapy with ADHD is often accompanied by psychological counseling or special educational intervention, you know, if it is needed. See, one kind of drug that could be used to treat ADHD are amphetamine drugs. These are a stimulant drug of the central nervous system, and it has what's called a paradoxical effect when given to patients. Because even though it is a stimulant drug, instead of increasing their hyperactivity, it will actually lessen it. And these drugs are classified as a Schedule II drug because they have a high potential for addiction. Some examples of amphetamine drugs for ADHD would include dextroamphetamine, also known by the name uh, dexedrine, lisdexamphetamine, also known by its trade name Vivance, Methamphetamine, also known by its trade name, the Soxin. Now, Amphetamine was first synthesized in the late 1920s. It was first used during World War II to help soldiers keep alert and avoid battle fatigue. And during the 1960s, a methamphetamine became a popular drug of abuse. And this drug was also known as Speed. In 1972, amphetamines were categorized as a Schedule II drug because of their high potential for abuse. Some other central nervous system stimulant drugs that can be used to treat ADHD. Now these act because they stimulate the central nervous system, but these are not amphetamines. Some examples of this would include dexmethylphenidate, also known by the name Focalin, and methylphenidate, also known by the various trade names uh, Concerta, Ditrena, Quilavant, and of course Ritalin. And these are all classified as Schedule II drugs because of their high potential for abuse. In 2006, doctors wrote about 1 million prescriptions a month for the drug Ritalin for children and adults and nearly 10% of all 12-year-old boys are on Ritalin. Now, one drawback of Ritalin was that the therapeutic effect lasts for only four hours. So a dose had to be taken at breakfast, then at lunch, and then late afternoon. Now, this was difficult to manage and embarrassing to children who had to take the drug during school. Now, a methylphenidate is available in a long-acting tablet, Ritalin LA, also in an extended-release tablet, Concerta, and also as a transdermal patch, Detrana. Dexmethylphenidate, or also known by the name of Focalin, contains only the dextro isomer, the more active isomer, of the same chemical molecule that is found in Ritalin. Right, some other drugs that are used to treat ADHD could include antidepressants such as Adomoxetine, known by its trade name Stratera, Bupropion, known by the names Aplenzin and Welbutrin, Imipramine, also known by the trade name uh, Tofranil. Some antipsychotics that could be used to treat ADHD include Chlorpromazine, also known by the name Th Thorazine. Haloperidol, known by the name Haldol. Some other drugs that were used to treat ADHD are drugs that will stimulate the alpha-2 receptors in the brain. And these include uh, Clonidine, known by the brand name Catapress, and Guanfacine, known by the trade name Tenex. Right, another kind of drug that could be used to treat ADHD are combination drugs. And probably the most well-known of these is Adderall. Now, Adderall is a combination of amphetamine and dextroamphetamine. Now, dextroamphetamine is an isomer of amphetamine, and it gets its name because the molecule is a right-handed mirror image of the amphetamine molecule. And dextroamphetamine is several times more potent as a stimulant drug. 
All right, now we'll talk about drugs that are used to treat withdrawal uh, from addiction. Now, addiction is a substance-related disorder. And addiction is the frequent or constant use and abuse of a drug or chemical to achieve a desired physical or emotional effect, such as a high or sedation or hallucinations. So after a brief period of abuse, the person will experience dependence. And this is the need for the drug to prevent withdrawal. And later on, the person will exhibit tolerance. There will be a decreasing effect of that chemical or of that drug even when the person increases the amount of the drug that they take. So this becomes a state of complete physical and psychological dependence on a drug. Now, some drugs are commonly used by addicts. Some examples of uh, scheduled drugs that are abused, heroin, cocaine, narcotics, barbiturates, anti-anxiety drugs. See, another drug that's commonly used by addicts is alcohol. When it comes to the withdrawal process, this is an emotional and very physically painful experience. Now, the symptoms of a withdrawal would include irritability, uh, sweating, runny nose, abdominal cramps, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, confusion, tremors, and muscle aches. Now you can use a Schedule 3 narcotic drug to treat withdrawal from addiction to heroin and cocaine or narcotic drugs. An example of this kind of drug would be buprenorphine, sold as the trade names uh, Subutex and Buprenex. You can also use Schedule 2 narcotic drugs to treat withdrawal addiction from heroin, cocaine, and other narcotics. An example of this would be methadone. This is sold as the trade names uh, Disquets or Dolophine. Now, this can also be used on a long-term basis to prevent re-addiction, and the person would need to go to a clinic to obtain a dose on a daily basis. And this will prevent uh, withdrawal symptoms. And methadone does not produce the euphoria that causes the drug-seeking behavior and addiction. So another drug that could be used to treat withdrawal is clonidine, also known by the name catapress, and this will stimulate the alpha-2 receptors on the brainstem. Another drug that could be given for withdrawal is naltrexone, known by the trade names Vivitrol and Revia. And this is a narcotic antagonist drug. The other kinds of drugs you can give to treat withdrawal are combination drugs. And combination drugs will contain a narcotic agonist antagonist, such as buprenorphine, and a narcotic antagonist, such as uh, naloxone. An example of this kind of combination drug would be uh, suboxone. Now, the drug suboxone had $1.55 billion in prescription drug sales in 2012. It successfully treats opioid addiction, but has also created a subculture of black market trade in unintended users. It's taken by addicts who want to avoid withdrawal, and also by recreational users who want a potent buzz, and also used by inmates that are in prison. In its drug form as a sublingual film, it can easily be sold or smuggled into prison. Now, this has caused an increased drug seizures by law enforcement, increased emergency room visits, and increased calls to poison control centers. And children may find and lick and eat the drug film. The drugs are used to treat Withdrawal from alcohol. These would include a camprosate, also known by the name uh, Camprol, and also disulfiram, also known by the trade name Antibuse. Now, Antibuse inhibits an enzyme that normally metabolizes one of the breakdown products of alcohol into blood. So if a patient drinks while taking this drug, the alcohol is changed to acetaldehyde, but cannot be further metabolized. So as the levels of acetaldehyde increase, the patient will experience flushing in the face, headaches, dizziness, and nausea, it can even have severe hypotension and cardiac arrhythmias. So these adverse reactions are supposed to keep alcoholics from taking a drink. However, patients must first express a desire to remain sober and cannot be placed on the drug without being forewarned of these adverse effects, and they must consent to their treatment. Now, patients must also be warned to avoid using cough syrups and mouthwashes that contain alcohol. All right, that brings us to the end of this chapter. We will continue our video series on pharmacology for health professionals with our next video on chapter number 17, Dermatologic Drugs.